I'm hoping everybody had a, a blessed day. Amen. Everybody's having a good day today. Amen. A good day. A good day. It's a good day in the neighborhood. Amen. It's a good day. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited um, because I know um, as God was um, asking us for the last couple of weeks, what does a disciple of Christ look like? I pray that many of us receive what God was saying. You know, um, what does a disciple of Christ look like? I pray that our hearts were open to, you know, understand that. Amen. Because today you don't need to know what does a disciple of Christ look like. But then it's interesting as we always have time and in the midst of praise and worship, God gave me a word and say, okay, we're going to talk about. He says, I'm going to, I want you to begin to speak about this. I don't know how long we're going to last on this, but I know what he meant from, okay, that what does a disciple of Christ look like to the question God said, truth. Amen. God wants to talk about truth. Somebody say truth. 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 You know, it's so funny because it, uh, it's a, as a rapper, they say, give us the truth. That's what we need. Man, he's been deceiving us since we were seeds. That's a long time ago. Truth. Wrote a song like that. Give us the truth. That's what we need because blind ears can deceive us because we were seeds. Amen. But we want to talk. I don't, that's not what God thinks. We want to talk about truth. And I want you to write it down. I want you to get ready to, uh, because how I many you know when we're in the classroom, we're not coming in the classroom. We, we come to praise and we come to, to acknowledge God. But I'm going to tell you something. You don't come to church just to hear a word. You come to church to become the word. Amen. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, that's what the problem was. He got to the place where it was no longer about, um, it was no longer <laughs> about uh, hearing the word. I mean, it was no longer about receiving and becoming the word. It was about, I need a word. And it became more about us saying, I need a word pertaining to what I want, not pertaining to what God wants and what God is doing. Amen. And that's what we see. And that's, and that's what we see a lot today. We see a lot of, Okay, God, I want a word, but I want a word pertaining to what I want, not a, not a word pertaining to God, what you are doing and, and what you are doing in me and what you are doing and what you desire from me. Amen. So I want to talk about God. I want to, say, I want to, talk, to God. God I want to talk about you because I was sitting there praising God and that teacher just you know, to deal with me about truth and, and how relevant truth is. It's so funny. I remember a person said truth is relevant based on one's own perspective. Well, that's a, that's the first lie right there. Truth is not relevant based upon your own perspective. But we're gonna go into it tonight, and I believe I know from when God gave me that a lot of a lot of people are going to begin to be delivered. See, we don't understand that the deliverance can come from the truth. Amen? Amen. That deliverance comes from the truth because bodies come from a lie. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. A lie that has been conceived to believe it is truth. Y'all, hope you with me, right? A lie that has been conceived to be, because if you don't know the truth, then the lie, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, and I want to say this to you because um, it's interesting in this study, I think it's going to reveal something to all of us that those who are diligently going to be willing to hear what God has to say. So I want to kind of start to study out with Proverbs 51, I, we said to Proverbs 51, 6 says, I want y'all to write that, Proverbs 51, 6 says, I'm, I'm sorry, Psalms, forgive me, Psalms 51, Verse 6 says, Behold, thy desire truth in the inward parts. I want you to know that God desires truth in the inward parts. Amen. Y'all got that right. God desires truth, truth, truth in the inward parts. Amen. Now I want to kind of give a little bit of understanding on that. Let's let's look at it for a minute. Uh, let's go to John 18. Uh, and I want you to start at verse 36. And I we want to go here. When you get there, you know. John, no, the book of John. Not John. The book of John. We're going with Matthew, Luke's. Matthew, Luke's. Mark, John. Uh, I'm just saying, maybe the fourth. I didn't say that correctly in order, but you know, I'm giving the four books. Okay, I want you to understand, and I want we want to start at verse actually 
um, 35. Let's start at verse 35. And I want to read, we're going to go down and I want, uh, I want everyone to follow along. We're going to be in the book of John, we're in the book of John 18, the chapter 18, starting at verse 35. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your, na your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Now, what's interesting is I want to just go here because they're asking Jesus. Jesus is funny because Pilate is now, Jesus has been brought before Pilate. Amen? The judgment seat. Jesus has been brought before the judgment seat. And Pilate. Um, is asking Jesus, telling Jesus that your own people brought you. That's why we know in the book of John, in the first chapter, he said he came among his own, but they received him not. But for those who received him, gave he power to do it, to make sons, because he came among his own. But, they, but, but how many of you know that they were doing what God wanted to be done? At that time that Jesus, let me tell you something, nobody took Jesus' life. Jesus laid his life down. It's an act of great love. I want to say, and not, not on Jesus, what Jesus did was an act of great love. And what his father did was motivated by love. Because the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen? That he gave his only begotten son. So the father, watch this, and I love it like this. We know Jesus as the what? The word of God, right? He was the word made flesh. Look at it like this. The father so loved the world that he gave the word. Amen? Y'all got to write that down because sometimes when you begin to understand who Christ is in scripture and you begin to break it down, you can get a clear understanding. The father so loved the world that he gave it. I know the scripture says he, he, gave, he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But watch this. In John, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word with God. The Word was God. Amen? And the Bible says the Word was made flesh. Y'all with me, right? The Word was made flesh. So let's go back to John 3, 16. Look at it like this. God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He gave the Word. That whomsoever believed in it shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Y'all get it. Somebody going to get a revelation. He gave the Word. Amen? And, 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 and the Word was fulfilled. And Jesus the word fulfill what the father wanted. Because that's one thing about it. When you give a word, um, my faith or belief in what you gave will determine my outcome. Amen? But you got to know who's speaking to. Because my faith and belief in who, whoever gave the word, if he's a liar, then your faith and belief won't be, the outcome won't be something damaging. You know what I'm saying? So I want y'all to get that. I want you to kind of put that in your spirit that God, that God who so loved the world, in other words, his motivation to save the world was, if I say, love. love. God's motivation to save the world was love. So the word that he gave is a reflection of his love. You see how you see it a little different? The word that he sent to die is, is the manifestation of his love. If I understand. Okay. So God so loved the world that he gave to him. So we got, we got that part down. Now, in, in John 18, 36, go ahead. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. You said my kingdom is not of the world. The word says my kingdom is not. That word kingdom is in kingdom means rule. Kingdom. King. Dominion. My kingdom is not of this world. Where I, where I have dominion. Amen. Where I am king in dominion is not of this world. Amen. Go ahead. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight mm -hmm. so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. Mm -hmm. But now my kingdom is not from here. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Look at Pilate. Now, you have to understand Pilate is a Gentile. You know what I'm saying? Pilate is asking a question. Are you a king? You know, go ahead. Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king. So you, you, say, you say correctly. I am a king. Go ahead. For this cause I was born. Mm -hmm. And for this cause I have come into the world mm -hmm. that I should bear witness to the truth. Mm. I want you to underline it. I came into the world to bear witness to the what? 
He came into the world. So the word came into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everybody say truth. truth. Jesus said, I came into the world to bear witness to the what? Truth. Okay, go ahead. Everyone who is of the truth. Mm. That's what you need to get. That's what we're grabbing out of there. Watch, watch what he says. He's talking about, he said, but, but now, it, um, I want to say this correct. He says, everyone that is of the truth Hear it, my voice. Mm. Mm. Everyone that is of the truth, hear it. So he's not saying this some tricky thing. He's saying that everyone that hears his voice is gonna have to know, gonna know truth. Amen? Amen. Because he came to bear witness of, of the truth. So everyone that hears his voice, gonna what? Gonna know the truth. Amen. So, the, so that's kind of interesting when he began to put that. Let me say, I, I mean, I, I love that when, I, when the Holy Spirit showed me, he says, everyone that is of the truth, everyone that is of the truth, hear my voice. So if you are of the truth, you're going to hear his voice. You're going to know his words. Because voice is a word. But you have to be of the truth to know the voice. Amen. Amen. Hmm. So you're wondering why some people are tripping. The question is, are they of the truth? Amen? Because it sounds like some people can't recognize his voice or are or, or, or ignorant to his voice. Y'all with me, right? Oh, yes. Some people might be ignorant to his voice and if you don't know the truth, then you can perceive that God is saying something that God never said. Amen. Amen? If you are not of him, you don't. How many of us know that at one point we were not of him? Amen. Oh, come on now. Don't lie. You were, the Bible says we all sin. We were not of him. And so, because we were not of him, we did not recognize truth. Matter of fact, truth was so foreign to us, when it is slapped you in your face, she was like, no, nah, I ain't feeling that. You know what I'm saying? If truth, if somebody came up into you and said, you know what? Well, I, I feel that um, you ought to love your enemies. What? Love my enemies? Now, I'm not going to love my, if you do me dirty, I'm going to do you dirty. You know what I'm saying? You run up on me, I'm going to run up on you. So, when you hear somebody, when you hear that, love your enemies, they like, he says, now watch, I want to read what he's saying now. Watch this. He's saying, if you are of the truth, you hear it, my voice. So when you hear the voice saying, forgive that person who did you dirty, that's not of the enemy. But those who are of the truth recognizes that voice. And, we, and watch this. Because their desire is to please their father, they come into compliance with it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Y'all with me? Yeah. Now, watch it. Go ahead. Go a little farther down. Then we go. I want to make a little point. Pilate said to him, What is true? There we go. I just want you to underline that. Pilate asked him, Are we in a time today, y'all? I'm asking a question. I'm just asking a question of the, of, of the disciples. Are we, are, in, are we in a time today that people are saying what is true? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anybody have a comment? Anybody have a statement? I, I, let me ask you a question, dude. What do y'all think about that? Are we actually in a time today where people are saying what is true? Let me give an example. You, you want to say something? Come on. Yeah, one thing about it is just that one one thing that people have turned truth is into is their truth or they want to say my truth. I'm gonna speak my truth. And the and the crazy part about that is that when someone really says that they're making their truth or his truth or her truth, oh it's just my truth, it's because they want to be their own God. And when, and it's the same deception that the serpent did with Eve, you know. He said that you shall know good and evil. 
you'll be your own lawmaker, your own judge, so on and so forth. And you know, when people say what's well, my truth, what they're really saying is I'm defining what's good and evil for myself, becoming their own God. So how many of y'all know that's the same today? It's the same we want to speak. Matter of fact, Oprah kind of started that speak, speak your truth. Speak your truth. But she, the word of God said, Jesus said, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Amen? Amen. Here is his voice. But we are in a time where Pilate says what is truth. So it's funny, God took me there because he said the truth. Because he says, even in my church, people are saying, what is true? You have Christians going at it with one another in combat and debating on what is true. As if, as if truth is based upon your interpretation. Last time I checked, the Bible is spiritually discerned. Amen? The Bible is spiritually discerned. You have to have the spirit of truth Y'all better um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I'm gonna throw that in there. You have to have the spirit of truth to be able to recognize truth. Because the spirit of truth searches the things of truth. Where man heart searches the things of man. But because your spirit searches your heart, don't mean it's gonna find truth. It might find what you feel, it might find what you like, it may find what you think. That doesn't necessarily make it truth. Amen. Amen. Now, what's this? So we got that. We got. I want y'all to get these two parts right here as we go in this study, as we go in this journey. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And Pilate turns around and says, "What is true?" So I believe that God is saying, "Okay, I don't truth. I'm gonna give it to my son of apostle. Let's let's create the foundation, understand what truth is." Okay, let's go one more place. Let's, let's go to the next one. Let's go to John 10, 27. And I like the part while you go into John, he said, he says, everyone that is of the truth, hear it, my voice. John um, 10, 27. Is it? No, it's 27, so I'm sorry, sir. 27. Okay, well, well, we won't debate about that if that's true or not. The truth is, it's 27. Now, Read John 27. 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. Mm. He said, my sheep. Everybody say, his sheep. His sheep. Oh, God, he's going to clear up some things through this study. Amen. He said, my sheep. He ain't saying, see, he, 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 he making this thing person. He said, my sheep. He said, the Bible says, God knows those who are his. his. And he says, I'm going to make it obvious that I know those are mine because those are mine. Go ahead. My sheep. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And I know them. My sheep hear my voice. It makes sense because he says in John, he says in, in, in John 18, he says, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice. One, one way they wrote it, my sheep hear my voice, and another they shall not follow. Amen? That's one way, correct? He says, my sheep. Because why? He said, I'm the chief shepherd. And any shepherd that I send going to speak what I say. Because they must have my spirit. If I send the shepherd, he, he must, number one, if because Christ is the chief shepherd. Can I get amen? Amen. The Lord is my what? Shepherd. I shall not what? Wow. He maketh me what? Down he needs me what? What do you do now? I love this. What do you do next? Come on, somebody. He restore what? My soul. I need the chief shepherd to have my soul restored. Amen. Amen. And he leads me down the pathway of righteousness for whose name's sake? Amen. Your name in his sake when he leads you. It's his name at stake when he because if he's a shepherd and you the sheep, it's his name is at stake when he leaves you. That's why when God speaks, he has to speak the truth. Why? His name is at stake. When he leaves you, when he speaks, if it don't produce what he says, you're gonna call him a liar. If he 
he is no liar. Amen. Amen. And neither was, that's why he, that's why the Bible says, How will they know unless I what? Sin. You can't sin yourself. God has to sin you. Because for him to sin you, you must be equipped with the spirit. You're going to see. You have to have the spirit. You're with me, right? Amen. Let me just, um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I want to kind of, I'm making a point. I'm going about to make a point, but I want to say this too. Um, John 17, 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them. Set them apart through truth. Thy word is truth. Your very, your very difference from the world comes from truth. You knowing truth. You being led by the truth. Amen. Your very difference from the world is true. Oh, I went down to and said, son, see what's happening. People had tried, they want to make it real complicated. They want to make it like, ooh, so you can always, so because when you don't know truth, you never believe you deliver. When you don't know truth, you won't even walk in the power you call it the walking in. People will lie to you and keep you in bondage. Why? So you can need them. Why you constantly need them? See, when somebody uses a lot of you, it's because they want you to be repetitive and needing them. They want you to need them so bad that you never learn the truth that you can stand in the word yourself. Amen. 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 But we're gonna we gonna we're gonna learn this truth. He says, he says, 18 to he said, my sheep. I want to read this. I want to, I want you to see them collect together. Even though it's 18 and 10, he says, mm, 18 and 10. Okay, we begin. Okay, 18 and 10. Take that one, 8, we begin. You know what I'm saying? Because when you get the truth, you got to what? We begin. Amen? Are y'all looking at me? Hey, make a word. Okay. okay. Verse 37 says, everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Verse 10 says, those who follow him, my sheep, what? My sheep, what? Yeah. They hear. And one, one say here, there is a place, there is some that have the place. my sheep know my voice. There is some that have, what is the king? One of, some of them have that interpretation. My sheep know my voice, but another they shall not follow. This says, my sheep hear my voice, right? Yeah. But I have seen it before where it says, my sheep know my voice, correct? Yeah. So watch this. To hear means I, that my sheep hear my voice. They hear the truth, and another they will not what? Oh. Why? Because he says here, and then he says, because why? Everyone that, because they are of the truth. Why? Because he said, behold, thy desire truth in the inward part. What's it? Whatever's in you, you're going to recognize. If truth is in you, you're going to recognize truth. Amen? Y'all with me? If truth about in you, then you're going to recognize truth. If truth don't abide in you, hmm. see, I heard, I, I mean, Pat said, one, one brother said, that discernment. See, you can't discern something if you don't have truth. Yeah. See, discernment is not this freaky thing based on what you feel. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. When you begin to speak, my discernment should kick in. Amen. To recognize what? Whatever's in your heart, because the Bible says, behold, that, the, behold, I desire truth in the inward parts. Watch this. He says, we, the Bible says we hide the word in our heart that we might not sin against them. We hide the word. Because why? He said, we are sanctified through thy word. Thy word is true. Thy word is true. true. And we have that truth in our thinking, in our emotions, in our desire. And when you begin to speak, I'm discerning if what you say line up with who we follow. Amen? Uh, amen? Amen. Okay, now let's 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 see the other side of that for a minute. Let's go here for a minute. John 8. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it. Okay, I'm gonna read it. John 8:44. No, you read it. You read it. I'm just going to see if you have the same. 
I want to show you something. Because we want to we want to make it. I want you to understand this. Please hear me. There is a distinguishing difference between Jesus, God and Satan. Mm. There is a because it seems like today we can't tell the difference. If you can't tell the difference between truth and a lie, then you that means you can't you, you don't believe there's no difference between Satan and God. Or you don't know the difference. Am I right? You, you, might, not, you might be able to the difference. Okay, John 8 44. Um, I just wanted to say this to, to give a little clarity if anyone needs it. Uh, Pastor Chris was preaching on it, and he said that he was saying that in these days uh, when Jesus was saying this, uh, he used this for an analogy just because the sheep, the, the shepherds would have all the sheep and they would feed them together. But because the sheep knew the shepherd's voice, they could go and call and only their sheep would come and follow them through a gate wherever they were going and they wouldn't follow the other voice. So when he's saying that we should be able to hear God's voice and only follow God. And that voice is the way he speaks. It's a distinguishing sound in the way God speaks. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Oh my God. Um, go ahead and start. I want y'all to please pay attention to this right because I want to show you there's a distinguishing difference and we have to know the difference. Go ahead. Okay, John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil. So we have the word saying you of your father, the devil. See, people would get offended at Jesus today. They really would. They would get offended of his disciples because Jesus had no problem telling somebody, you, you know, no, your daddy is the devil. <laughs> your daddy is the devil and I don't care that you sit in church I don't care you sit inside a building I don't care what you talk about who you belong to a patient. your daddy is the devil because when Jesus was talking y'all have to understand something when Jesus was saying this he is talking to the religious order he's not talking to um, he's not talking to the Gentile he's talking to the religious order and he's telling those who would, that we, you know, this is so good. He's telling those that you in church that you go to church, and he's saying to those who say they're Moses' children, we're Abraham's seed. He is saying that your father is. Mm, that's a strong statement. Come on, you got on your high piece, you got on your clothes, you got on your robes, you looking all godly on the outside, and. Everybody, everybody else, they looking at your outside appearance, and they're like, that's, 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 uh, that's, that's rabbi, and that's Levi, you know what I'm saying? That's a Levi of the, of the priesthood, and, and they're saying that, and Jesus is looking at the ones that they're looking at, the ones who are running the sanctuary, the synagogues, and, the and he is saying unto them, your father, see, father means someone you belong to. Father means someone who birthed you. Father also means someone you're trying to copy, <coughs> imitate. So uh, it's important to understand he's, that, that it would be like him walking in here today and saying, while we all in church, we like good. And he would say, your father is the devil. All of them be like, what? Hold, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -uh. I don't, I no, 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 you, my, I know who my father is. And they would say, I promise you, when sometimes when you read the scripture, they was like, no, nah, we Abraham seed. And Jesus would say, y'all brothers got it twisted. No, no. If you were Abraham seed, then you would know me. If you were a Moses, you would know me. So, watch, watch this. How many of y'all got a revelation what I just said? Jesus said, if you are Abraham's seed, you would know me. My sheep. Know my voice. They were not. The word was speaking and they did not know. And he's saying in scripture, he says, it is written of me. 
Moses spoke of me, so it's not like they shouldn't have known it. Well, y'all better get that part right there. If we, we better get that part. It's not like they should not have known it, because see, what we're, Jesus will often refer to the Old Testament and those who spoke of him for them to say, you should know it. You know what? You've been studying this up the Torah, all this. You you got Moses. Like they spoke of me, and yet I stand before you, and you don't. You can't hear me. You can't rec- Then what you watch? Yo, I said. Then what? Then what did? You, what shifted you? Why do you still look like me on the outside, but something has shifted you? Shifted you that you no longer hear me no more. You go to church every Sunday. You go to church every Saturday. You in the house of God, you open it, but yet when I'm speaking to you, you can't hear me. You can't hear me. Go ahead. And the desires of your father you want to do. Oh my God. Please underline me. Because in that statement. He's revealing what pulled them away. He's revealing why they no longer can hear. You want to know why we can no longer hear? You want to know why you can't hear no more? Read it again. The desires of your father you want to do. See, you have, you already have a seat in you on how God should move that came not from God, but from your father. Mm. Let me give you an understanding. When Jesus came, and it was already in Isaiah, and those who spoke of Jesus came to fulfill the prophets and the law. When Jesus came, they, they couldn't recognize what we were saying because their father had pregnated them with another seed of another purpose for God. Because when Jesus came, he wasn't operating according to the seed of their father. Because they figured that their father said they, they had a binding heart. They were they was mad. Well, come and kill these people. When are you gonna when you gonna crush Jews? When are you gonna crush this? When are you gonna destroy our enemy? So they proceed in their heart by their father. Because even watch it, let me give you scriptures. When Jesus passed through Samaritan, and when he passed through Samaritan, the Samaritans ignored Jesus. His disciples who he had to what train to hear what his voice to learn them they said because how they saw how they treated the word they said they went to old testament they went to the old testament and said let like Elijah, let us call down fire and what, what was it saying let's destroy them because they don't want to hear the word but jesus said you know not what spirit you are of mm. Jesus, somebody got it. Jesus, you know not what spirit you are. Because see, the Holy Ghost guides you in all. The Jesus, there's a, he said, the spirit of what shall come? The spirit of truth. You are not of the right spirit because if you're of the right spirit, why are you calling down? Why do you want to call down fire to destroy someone when I came to deliver someone? See, why is that dangerous? Because you said, back off your judgment. Because I'm a God that, that, that will say that you reap what you sow. So if I don't get you to back off, then I'm going to destroy you because I'm going I'm to show you that you don't miss. Mm. I'm going to show you that you won't sit with me or ride with me. So if, if I do what you tell me to do in this situation, because they have having trouble with the word, because they're not really open to receive the word, then I'm going to have to do it to you too. So if I call down fire on them, when they come get me in the garden, I'm going to have to call down fire on you. Why? Because one of you denied me, one betrayed me, and two of y'all left me hanging. So if I move, if I obey you in this situation, then I'm going to have to kill all y'all in that situation. Because you're acting just like they're acting in this situation. Let me say, is that some people in this room? Aren't you glad that you, that God didn't give you what you wanted? Come on, somebody. Is there anybody glad that God didn't give you what you wanted? I'm raising my hand. I'm glad that God did not give me what I wanted. What do you mean? 
you know, with your, let's say my baby mama, I'm like, I want God to kill her. Kill her. Judge her. Judge her. Could destroy her, God. God says, you sure you want me to destroy her? Yeah, because she's doing me wrong, God. She's doing me dirty. Mm -hmm. He said, and God, she ain't, she ain't, she don't love you. Now watch it. I says, you sure you don't want to, you might want to back off there. Why? Because the first First time you show me you don't love me, the first time you ignore me when I tell you to do something, I'm going to kill you. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up, God. Don't kill her. God, keep her. Have mercy, God. Be kind. Be just. See, when you begin to realize the judgment you want for another will also be your judgment. Isn't it funny how you change that judgment? Amen. Amen. You want God to forget her? You want God to forget him? You want, see, this is a person. True. If you want God to forget them, if you want God to crush them, then remember now when you move against God the way they move against God, the judgment you gave against them, and you're like, God, and then we be like, when I need, I know, I'll be like, God, have mercy. God, please be forgiven. God, come on, be patient with me. And God said, but when you, but when, but when my sister slipped and my brother missed, you weren't patient with them. Hmm. See, y'all. Let me give you a story, a scripture in the Bible so you can understand what our house, how true this is. There was a man who was in debt. Um, and he, he was in debt and he ran against the man. He, he ran into the man who he owed money to. When he owed money to, the man was, in that day, when you didn't pay somebody the money that you owe them, you became a slave to them. You were going to go to, so they came and they was going, man, he was going to be a slave and it is that. And he begged, he said, please, he forgive me. And the man said, you know what? I forgive you. Of all your debt, I'm gonna set you free. I don't know about you. That man was like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for forgiveness of the debt. The Bible says he walked a little further down and he saw a man that owed him money. He saw this is true. He saw someone that owed him money. Oh, he sir. Isn't it funny? When we're in a situation, we want mercy, we want grace, we want long suffering, we want God. we want all God's goodness. Yeah. But now you and now you're the chief. Now you the boss. And now the man owe you money. The Bible say the brother just went off. Start going off on the man, start talking about had the man put in prison, boom, 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 boom. He went off. Now he just got delivered. Come on now. How many of us got you? Just, come on. It ain't been too long you got delivered from sin. It ain't been too long you got delivered from fornication. It ain't been too long you got commit, uh, delivered from lying. And now somebody lying to you, you want them to die. Mm. Give us the truth. You want them to die. Let me tell you what happened. It got back to the first one, how he acted. It got back to how he treated the, the one. And what he received was, with, was pulled back. And he went to prison. What am I trying to, what, what is God trying to show us the truth? Mm. Remember the grace, the truth, and the love that God gave unto you. Amen. It does not mean ignore what God is saying, but ask God for the very patience and long suffering that God will be able to save that person as he saved you. Amen. And I know it seems difficult when the person that you're praying for is the one causing you pain. But maybe you and I remember when we were causing God pain. You say, I didn't cause God no pain. Actually, you did when you sinned. That's what, that, that's what those nails were for. Those th thorns on his head was because what we were doing it was for sin. Amen? Amen. Say truth. truth. Okay. Now, now watch this. Go ahead. So, well, hold on. I'm sorry. I want to read what it said. Yea, of your father, the devil, and your father lust. I mean, and the lust of your father, yea, will do. Satan pulls us away from God by appealing to our own desires. That's it. That's it. I'm going to show you this in Scripture. He does it to me. He does it to everybody. He will appeal to your desire. He know what you like. Why? Y'all want to know how? Let me tell you why I say no so well. Because you used to, he used to be your dad. 
Everybody in this room, including me, he was your daddy. That's why. See, what's funny about the world is they don't think Satan is their daddy. They don't. But see, if, come on. If I can convince you there's no demons, if I can convince you there is no spirit, and you walk around to my, I don't believe in demons. They like thank you, <laughs> thank you. I'm so glad that you don't believe. I'm so glad that you don't believe in Satan, because it's evil. Uh, come on, man. You didn't come on. Let's think about it for a minute. You didn't come out the womb needing marijuana. You didn't come out the womb. Well, maybe you did. I don't know. It depends on the condition of your mama. I don't know. Because you can be addicted to uh, You didn't come out the womb. Need, I mean, what I'm trying to show you is that because we are born in iniquity. That's true. We are born in sin. But those appetites get fed. Amen? They get fed. They get fed. And Satan is the one who eats. You ever, you, ever, you ever want to stop doing something? And as soon as you stop, it's like, you know, let's fix it. You know, I want to stop. I ain't, I'm, 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 I'm holding, I ain't, I ain't rolling with no females. I'm, I'm rolling. And then all of a sudden, I went into the female. When I liked her since she was in high school, and she looking better. I'm like, oh, oh, and she, oh, and she real interested. And you're like, oh. But see, if you don't know truth, Somebody said, what do you mean with you no truth? You will believe God sent you something. But see, if what was sent to you took you away from God, then God would never send you. If I say truth. God is not going to send you something that will take you away from truth. Because... Truth is the only place you're going to be able to trust where you won't get broken. Right. Truth is the only place where you don't get broken. Y'all understand? Because yeah. especially y'all understand, man, you be on fire for God. And all of a sudden, be this female with you. But they be like, hey. And he'll send them into the church. Yes, they will. Why? And they have been sent to pull. The Bible says a man, let me say man, you are carried away. If I say carried away. Now what's it? Somebody tell me, what do you think you're carried away from? But let's, but let's break it down. Say it again. Truth. You are carried away from truth. But watch what the Bible says. A man is carried by his own desires. It was my desire that carried away from truth. Why? Because what I wanted was more important than what God was speaking. Y'all with me, right? I'm going to show you in scripture. Come on. You got to come up. <laughs> let me take you home. Let me take while we have people come up. Because there are people out there, there are people in the classroom on Zoom. You know, and therefore, we want everybody to hear what you have to say. So give us a mic. I just have a question to ask. I'm so loud and I've been wanting to get to. But they got to hear you. But they have oh, to hear you. Yeah, they have to hear you. Come up. Come up. My, my question is okay, why is it? When you face the truth, mm. you condemn yourself. Mm. Uh, but, okay. I, 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 when truth comes mm, to you, right. why do you condemn it? Oh, oh, I said, that's, that's a great question. Let, let me tell you why. Because the lie is still fighting. Mm. See, the lie is still fighting. Because when truth confronts you, it's confronting you basically because something you went bondage to. So when, it, when truth confronts you, the lie says, that ain't true. <laughs> And you be like, and they like, and then you went, and then the last thing, you can't be saved from that. You can't be delivered. You're gonna all, you gonna all, you murdered your baby in the womb. You ain't gonna be forgiven. So the last, why? Let me tell you all this. If I can convince you that you can't be forgiven, you'll feel hopeless. You'll feel like you won't fight because come on now. If you give me, a, if you give me a little bit of hope, I'm gonna grab a hold of that hope and be pulled out. But if you snatch that hope away and say, you know what? You're going to always be a crackhead. You're going to always be a liar. If God don't, if God don't forgive you and, and condemn you, then, then guess what? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna feel like a woman. Because Satan, that's why God, we have to watch, watch people who speak in uh, generalization. When you see somebody speak in generalization, you know, first of all, that's not God. It's a, why? Because they say all men are dogs. You don't even know all men. All women 
or just out of your money. When people, why is generalization so, why is it so terrible? It is a hope still. Because if I tell you everybody's that way, then if you believe it, well, I might as well go on and get what I got to get out of it because ain't nobody good for real. You see, it's tricky. Ain't nobody gonna treat you right for real. Cause I remember, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. I remember when I was in the world, right? I had a, I had a daughter and I had a son from two different women. I remember when I got saved, I was like, oh, man, you don't want me with a daughter or something. And then at that point, he could not hear you, like, and I, I wouldn't have the sheriff's department no more. So not only did I have a daughter and a son, I wasn't making no money. So let me tell you what God did. Because before, when I was 30, I didn't have no kids. And I was making big money. So I felt like I'm proud of you. Like, you know, you lucky, but you know, if I talk to you. And God said, let me help you. <laughs> let me help you because you won't come to me. Nothing, look, as long as you think like that, you ain't coming to me. Uh, so let me let your sin bring you to the end. Wow. Yeah, that's so when my sin brought me to the end, because think of your question. And now I got truth saying, you know, I'm like, Ain't nobody gonna want nobody with two kids or two different women, and, and who's gonna want someone like that? And I'm hearing all these voices, and I'm feeling condemned. But I'm so glad that God's voice spoke out loud. And, and, and one thing you have to do when, when that thing's trying to condemn you, that's when you eat more. Amen. See, the enemy wants you to get so far, say, no, I'm not going to hear no I don't want to hear no, I'm just frustrated. No, why? Because the more, come on. The more you sit under the shower, the better chance you have of being clean and refreshed. Amen. That's it. You answered the question, but the point I'm trying to make, okay, as we know now, the world we got now mm -hmm. is a lot of tricks everywhere. Okay? Off the microphone. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Thank you. I do apologize. <laughs> the world is full of a whole lot of things now. Right. And yes, I understand the point you said about. You have to know the difference. Mm -hmm. We are lured to many voices. Okay. Take it for one social media. Mm -hmm. It lures you far off. Streets lures you. Friends lures you. Okay. But how would you know the right voice? Now, you know, you said the voice is the truth. Right. Now, God come with the truth and He already gave us the truth. Right. We gave our lives to Christ. Mm -hmm. We surrendered. So once we surrender, why do we come back and try to pick up what we already have surrendered? Are you hearing where I'm going? I got you. I got you. Okay? And we're supposed to remain in the truth. Right. And let me say this to you. Mm -hmm. Two things I'm going to say to you. Two words. Commitment and belief. Mm -hmm. Many of us don't commit to what we committed to it for the problem being solved, but not committed for the life being changed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In other words, God, I'm committed to you until you get me out of jail. But I wasn't committed to you for my life being changed. Mm -hmm. And then belief and belief. Oh my God. God. See, I mean, know you can say something and really don't believe. Don't believe. Because when I was in the world, oh, even when you was in, but it's in the church too. It's all so, oh, sell big game, oh, talk big game into the storm. And the storm is an opportunity to see what you are anchoring. That's why the Bible says it's it not strange when trials come to try your faith. Faith come by what? Yeah. Hearing what? The and the word of God is truth. So I'm gonna see if you believe in the truth when the truth looks impossible. And the only way you can believe the truth is your mind is renewed. Renewed. Renew in the truth. Amen. 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 You, you get what I'm no, talking no, 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 So no. where that truth supposed to remain, mm -hmm. well, we here condemning ourselves. Mm -hmm. We going in the shower, we beating ourselves because we found a day, or we um, we did something to someone mm -hmm. that was not right. We told a little lie, right. and that's that's where I'm coming from. No, I, I, I go deep into yeah. little things. Amen. And then, yeah. why, why? But, but it's good. Why? Because the Bible says a little leaven leaven the whole lump. Mm -hmm. It's the little things that we can see. It causes things to become bigger. Yeah. If you deal with the little things, yeah. you extinguish those things becoming bigger. Yeah. Amen? And at, the same, at, the same, at the same way when he said he had already forgiven us, mm -hmm. so why are we condemning us? There you go. Okay. And, and, and when there is, see, there's a receiving. 
and there is a believing. And then there's a commitment to the one who did for Dave to give you the strength not to repeat. Amen? There's a commitment to that. Because some things, some things, God got to process it out of you. Amen? Yeah. I tell people like this, you may have smoked, you smoked a pack of cigarettes. And some of us don't rejoice because you only smoke half a pack now. When actually you should. But, but the and knowing that God is moving in your life. And continue to go in that. Because everybody don't. Some people, God, snatch away by, by this. Now, don't ask me why. And don't let nobody convince you that he that, that, that every process is the same. God may snatch it away from you, a person like that. Well, when I got when I was smoking, when I did, I I, I just smoked that was, I, I'm glad. But it seemed like for me, it was a more battle. And, and I had to eat more. And I had to go more. And I had to fast more. Why? Maybe your process. I tell people, I just tell people, we in Fort Lauderdale, right? Everybody we in Fort Lauderdale. Some of us came 95. Some of us came 27. Some of us came turnpike. There were many, I'm not saying many roads to God. I'm saying many roads to be processed. There's only one way to God, but there are many ways to be processed by God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And therefore, if you came turnpike and God did it for you quick, don't get mad at me because God got me stopping every stop sign and, de and dealing with me about it. You know what I'm saying? That's 27. 27, I'm like, I'm gonna stop playing. I'm like, okay, God, okay, God. And maybe someone needs to see how long suffering God is in that situation yeah. and how patient he is in that situation to bring you to that place of victory. Okay. Amen. Amen. Amen, woman of God. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I want us to um watch this. I want us to finish this. I, but I, I had to put interest on because why watch this truth is I need to know what keeps pulling me away. I need to know there's a desire that I need God to deal with. There's a there's a usually a, a, a desire, and Satan with his lies is pop pop to tell me I can't be delivered from that desire, or I can't be free from that desire. And I and, and I'm really believing him. So why? Because it seems so hard. That's why the Bible says with God, all things are possible. Amen? The more I push toward the light, the darkness has to retreat. Okay, let's finish reading that right there because I want to kind of bring it to an end. Okay, um, what's the first verse? Yes. It says, he was a murderer from mm -hmm. the beginning yes. and does not stand in the truth. Ooh. How many of y'all got that? He says he started out with a yeah. He said yeah. He said they are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you do. And he, the one you you're following, he is a murderer from the beginning. And what? And he does not stand in truth. Satan does not stand in truth. Amen. He does not. He is a lie. He is a murderer from the beginning. The Bible said from the beginning. And he does not stand in truth. So when he comes to appeal to you, he's going to appeal to your desire, but he's not standing in truth. That means he's shooting game. He's shooting game. And how many of us in this room, he used you to shoot game? Well, y'all lying if you ain't got your hands up. You know he used you to shoot game. You know, women and men, he used you to shoot game. What, what, what shooting game mean? You did all kind of little smooth little things to get your way. Yeah. If it was the back your eyes, if it was the you just hit me. <laughs> if it was to show your chest, if it was, if it was oh, whatever he he used us to shoot game. The lie, it was a lying system. He does, y'all gotta hear this. He does not stand in the truth. And he has to get you to move from the truth by appealing to your desire. Y'all with me, right? That's just, I promise y'all, I know people will try to make it difficult in time. No, it's just, it can't be that simple. Yes, it is. And the reason why he know your desire so much because we use the work for them. Yes. Your boss, come on. Who do you call people? When you go to your new employee, who do they want to call? Your old employee. They want to call your old boss. Why? So they know, because he know your habits. They know your work habits. 
But I promise you, Jesus ain't calling. He's not calling y'all old boss. Right? He's not going to call him because he knows he is a. He gonna lie about you. He gonna say that that you that you that you that you are um, that you got you nasty that you rude that you hoish that you this and that and that. Now watch it. You say, well. This, 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 this goes your point right here. You say, <laughs> and the enemy said, in your flesh, like, well, you did. No. But God said, you are a new creature. All uh, old things are passed away. All things are made new. Why are you agreeing with something that you do not agree with God? You are delivered. See, let me say something. People are, I'm about to say something about them. A lot of you who have delivered, delivered ministries keep you depending on deliverance. Wow. 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 They keep, why? Because they, because why? The Bible says, whom the Spirit of the Lord has set free is free indeed. Israel was free. Was Israel free? Yes. Israel was no longer in Egypt when they were stripping. Am I right or wrong? Right. I don't care what they were feeling. I don't care. The enemy, even though the enemy was pursuing them, he was not pursuing them. They were not in bondage when he was pursuing they were not in bondage when he was pursuing. Y'all better see the revelation of that. They were not in bondage when he was pursuing them. They were out of Egypt. So that means the enemy can be pursuing you, but you're not in bondage. Amen. And the way you destroy him when you're not in bondage is to walk in faith. Hallelujah. Let me illustrate it for you. You see that it's not, no, anybody, no. Your belief going to have to be built because the Bible says God is the author in the industry of your faith. Your problem is you don't believe you free. So you, so you feel my head and I feel like this and I feel like that I need somebody to do this. And I'll be like, what? Oh, he a little faith. So even God expects accountability when he gives you the word. But watch it. <laughs> this is so good. Watch it. God and when do we begin to be challenged in faith? When something before us looks impossible. Yeah. Am I right, man of God? When it looks impossible, your faith is challenged. Yeah. It don't feel bad. It ain't new. It's been going on. It's all in the Bible. Yeah. When the children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt. Yeah. I ain't got no job. I don't know what. I feel like I'm in, I'm in. You mean what? No, you got a problem with belief. Yeah. And here comes the enemy. He's pursuing you. You ain't gonna make it. You ain't that ain't no possession. You ain't gonna make it. How you know that was on no possession? They were out of Egypt. You, when it, you can't possess something that ain't where you at. You can't possess something that you no longer you out of Egypt. So watch this. What was in front of them was an ocean. They ain't never seen it. Never seen it. Never seen it. Anybody been in a situation where they ain't never seen it? Yeah. You know, I ain't never seen God. Do, so when you ain't never seen, be like, <laughs> <laughs> it was better when I was in Egypt. <laughs> At least I knew what I was dealing with. Like, I don't know. I ain't not, God. I'm scared. You know, you be scared, God. I'm scared. And you come in. And, well, you know what? Go back to your ex. He'll give you the money. Or oh, y'all don't want to talk. To me. <laughs> y'all don't want to talk. To me. Go, go, go back. Go back to sin. I'm trying to hook you up. And here, I hook you up. Here's the deal. Why? Because what's in front of you looked impossible. But the just shall walk by faith. And not by sight. So I don't see it. But God is the one that put me in this situation. Why? Because I'm his. Why? I've been released from Egypt. So watch this. Moses had to extend his hands like this. Right, Father? God says, I got you here because I really just want you to surrender. Because I'm tired of you getting in the way while I'm taking you to your destiny. I'm tired of you that your desire is cleansing from the great destiny because everybody in this room. God knew you before you were in your mother's womb. His thoughts towards you are never evil. I don't care what you've been confronted with. Whatever. His thoughts. But watch what he said. I love this part right here. His thoughts towards you are not evil. But watch what he says. But to give you hope and a future. Listen. Hope 
in the future. As long as I got hope, I can walk in a new future. Because he ain't thinking evil about me. But I see something that's impossible to be on me. But he says, not that I said, he said, well, surrender. And when Moses was being held up, that which was impossible. And now they are walking in faith through the impossible. Is there anybody in this room walking through the impossible with faith? Sometimes some people, right before we're about to open, you took that side there. Uh-huh. And now what would have took you seven days, taking you 40 years. Now watch this. I want y'all to see this because we're gonna, we're gonna this is so powerful if y'all get this revelation. When they by faith the ocean is split, the impossible thing is split. Somebody said. I'm so tired, I just want to get rid of it. I've been dealing with this for 17 years. I've been dealing with this hurt. I've been dealing with this for that many years. Watch this. But as you walk in faith through the, through the way that God has given you, the enemy is so crazy, he's going to try to pursue you. But see, he can't pursue you. Yeah, we got to get this out. He cannot pursue you in faith. Because if he pursue you in faith, his kingdom is the yeah. But they, but he crazy enough to think he can. So when they got to the other side and Miriam, they broke out in a praise. The crazy enemy is now trying to walk the way you walk in faith. But what he don't know is that faith is about to collapse on him because he don't have the word. So this pursuit after you is not trying to fulfill the word of God. He's pursuit after you. We read it right here. We read it right here. Watch this. He says, I'm going to read some more. He says, he was a murderer. See, he was pursuing to murder you. He was pursuing you, daughters, to destroy you. He was pursuing you, sons, to mess your life up, to make you feel like you're nothing, that you can't make it. His pursuit after you is to make you, make you think that God is not going to do what he said. Like, God, don't think about you. I promise you, he think about you every moment and second of the day. He know every hair on your head. And he know every mistake you ever made, and yet he's still calling your name. He know every, he knew everything about David. He knew everything about Moses. And he knew everything about Abraham. And yet they made mistakes. David made some big mistakes. Yeah. And yet, you want the enemy trying to convince you that God from talk. He, well, God. Because just because, oh, I hear Holy Spirit. Just because you ain't been thinking about him, don't mean he ain't thinking about you. Amen. He like that ex. He like that ex that can't give up. <laughs> you know, the ex is like, I'm, I'm going to keep calling you. I still love you. <laughs> You're special to me. And he's like, I'm going on to my boo. I'm with somebody new. I don't care. He, he liked the one at the window. <laughs> God is a stalker. Yeah. Oh my God, he's a stalker. He's a stalker. He can't make your bed in here. God is a stalker. Relentless, unfailing love in his pursuit. Remember this girl said she was in the bed with somebody and God like, what you doing? That happened for real. She in the bed having sex. But God said, what you doing? He a pursuer. A fine wine. And yes, you are a fine wine. Made and developed over time. Amen? Not cheap. Priceless. More, more valuable than silver and gold. 
when they tried to pursue the children of Israel, the Bible says that they were all destroyed. We're in a season that something is getting destroyed because you're going to keep going. Some people, you're going to have to fix. Some people have to fix. You will never smoke weed again. You will never smoke weed again. You will never smoke weed again. Because it was destroyed. You will never get hot again because it's, about, it's going to be destroyed. Because why? God will snatch your desire and put you in a position where you're going to have to keep going. And the enemy going to try to pursue you and God going to destroy him. He's going to destroy that urge. Amen? Amen. Because if Satan can walk in faith, <laughs> then he ain't no demon. There's a difference between being in Egypt in bondage and being set free and he pursuing you. Pursuing can bring pressure too because you see it. And pursuing, even though they were out of Egypt, they told Moses, you brought us out here to die. <laughs> Some of y'all think it's your situation, you're in that situation to die. And God says, no, you're about to leave. I came that you may have life and have it more hungry. He said, that is the truth. Amen. Now, finish with this finish with so we get it. Are we learning something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, he says he was a murderer from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and does not stand in the truth. He does not stand in the truth. Go ahead. Because there is no truth in him. Yeah, I get that. There is no truth in Satan. There is, I want y'all to remember that. There is no truth in Satan. He, it, it, it ain't true. I don't care how much he decorates, I don't care how much Satan may make it look like it's true. There is no truth in him. What does that mean? God ain't about, the word God is not about you in him. Go ahead. When he speaks a lie. When he speaks what? A lie. When he speaks a lie, go ahead. He speaks from his own resources. I like that one once say when he speaks a lie, he speaks in his native tongue. When he speaks a lie, that's his natural tongue. That's his tongue. He, like the other brother, he is lies. He can't help. He lies. He is a liar. Satan is a he gonna lie, 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 lie. There is no truth in him. That's why his greatest weapon is deception, because he has to make you. He's a wolf, but he's gonna do. He's a wolf, but masquerading as a sheep. Because if you knew he was a wolf, you'll recognize his lie. Right. See, when you see the wolf, you recognize the nature of a wolf. So I have to make you think I have another nature. I have to have make you have a, think I have a nature, a godly nature. He says that he's gonna be like an angel. He's gonna come like an angel of light when he darkens. No, I got. See, Satan's greatest weapon is not death anymore. He don't have death anymore. That's the truth. God has a key. He doesn't have any weapon. So what is his weapon? If you read New Testament, you see his weapon being exposed. The Bible says he's a wolf pretending to be a sheep. The Bible says his aim, he will come like an angel of light when he is darkness. The Bible says he's a white, he will come like a white sepulcher, but he's dead man bones. So the Bible says he's dead man bones, he's darkness, and, and a wolf. If you look at the nature of those three things, they are not good. Darkness you can't see. A wolf is a devourer. Amen? And they have been bones me, there's no, no stability. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. But he wants to act as if he has stability. He wants to act like he's the light. Be, this is his weapon. This is the spirit of deception going on in the world today. You, you're a man, but you want to act like a woman. Mm -hmm. You're a woman, but you want to act like a man. That's deception. You're a child, but you want to act like you're grown. You grown, but you want to act like a child. How many of us been there? We all been there. I'm first one, been there. Even while I've been in ministry, been there. And God has to what? Mature you. Not forsake you, mature you. He prunes the vine that it may grow. So we read, we, how many of us got the nature on this? You got it, right? All of us got it, right? We see it. We see my, he said, we, we found out with God. We found out that his sheep, what? Know his voice. 
that he speaks the truth. We know that Satan, there is no truth in him. Now, how many y'all know from what we've been teaching right now, there is a distinguishing difference between the two? Right? Now, the question is, I have to know the difference. Amen? And I have to know that Satan's job, who the Bible, remember the Bible said, he cannot tell the truth. There is no truth in him. Even when he sounds like he's telling the truth, he uses it in a way to lie. When he quotes scripture, he uses it in a way to lie. Amen? Amen. So, let's get ready. Y'all ready? Let, yeah, let's, ready. Get, let's get into Let's get into the. Let's get into Genesis. Go, let's go to Genesis 2, 16 and 17. We're almost there, y'all. Y'all feel me? I need God wants to kind of show it to us. All right? He wants us to see it laid out. That and what's he's going, we're going to the beginning so we can understand how it all started, how it played out. Genesis 16 and 17. Read it. Okay, Genesis 2, 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man. Hold up, hold up, y'all. He did what? Commanded. Everybody say, commanded. commanded. He not asked for nothing. See, y'all think, God don't command. Oh, truth does command. But why, why would truth command? Because the truth operates off of love. I really don't want you to do this. Because, because I love you. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, mm -hmm. saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. Everything. The garden, I mean, come on, mangoes, <laughs> pineapple, everything. I'm talking about whatever you want. God, he did this for me. Because God don't need that food. God ain't got to eat now. No, he ain't. He made it for us. I'm talking about apple pie. Thank you, Lord. You know what I'm saying? Banana pudding. Thank you, Lord. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Give us some praise for the stuff you made. Yeah. Yeah. God, I mean, he said you can eat all that. Could, could you imagine just sitting there and you got all that stuff in front of you like hmm. It's like God saying to a man, you know, I got to bring y'all know I got to bring it to the day. It's like God saying to a man, all these beautiful doors you can have. Yeah, I got it. And you turn over and tell me, no, I want that man. <laughs> okay, y'all don't want to talk to me no more. Y'all are going to like, oh. I know that. I, I see that they get a, a real reality check. You know what I'm saying? All these you got these men, powerful men, these high men, and you're not going to let me see it to my, no, I won't. I won't. You want something that you can't produce nothing with? So they got all that tree. But all of us been there. We've been there. We've been there. Come on, let's not have all brand new. We've been there. Amen? Somewhere or another, you've been there. Yeah. Amen? Go ahead. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Everybody said, That's when choice came in. That's That's when choice choice came. Don't let nobody deceive you. Choice came because if I tell you all this is good, right? Mm -hmm. But and I don't say nothing else, then you have the there's no choice. But if once I tell you you can't do something, uh -huh. now you have choice. Amen. Amen. You now have choice because the bottom line. Because what if he had never, what if, they, if he had never seen it, there could be no see. If there is no word established, there is no law broken. If mama never told you not to go outside, then mama can't get mad that I went outside. Does that make sense? Something has to be said for something to be violated. That's just truth. If there is nothing said, nothing violent. If God never told you you was in bondage, some of us waiting for God to tell you, God ain't saying nothing to the system, and you, but it's your own mind that got you feeling like you bound up. It's your own mind that got you feeling like 
got you feeling, God got something against you. Even though his thoughts say, he said, my thoughts are not, not evil toward you. You think, even when you mess up, you say, and he says, well, when you ask, when you come in for forgiveness, I cast it as far, the sin as far as from the east to the west. And we tell God, no, it's right here. And you think God going to believe it's right there because you say How can God deliver you from something that ain't there? Oh, my God. No, God can't deliver you. It's not there. Because if it's there, oh God is alive. Yeah. But Satan's job is to convince you that you're still in Egypt. You there? But God says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there he is. <laughs> and God said, let the redeemer of the Lord so. so you're not redeemed? So God didn't do what he said he was going to do? No. And God ain't mad at us for you not believing me. But don't think God going to yield to your unbelief because then, and then he has to bother his own word. If he said you're free, you're free. Now God in his long suffering and patience is going to get you to the place where you start realizing I'm free. Amen. That's a renewal of, somebody said, that's a, she, said, she said, renewal of your mind. What is renewal? I now believe. I just believe. You didn't believe it? You believe it. Now, this is the part that's good. It don't matter if you didn't believe, believe it. Amen. You were still free. See, your word, God's word is not predicated on what you believe or not believe. It's predicated if God said it, it's done. Saying, well, because you believe you're in Egypt, I guess I need to come back and deliver you from Egypt again. <laughs> See how crazy we are? Man, you shout out how empty for you he gonna come deliver you like he don't like he don't keep his word. And see, when you start believing this garbage, then you don't really believe you're free. And God says, But you're free. Come on. Why? Because you asked me. Because you came. Thank you, Lord. And you couldn't do some of the things you're doing unless I feed you. Amen. You couldn't do some of the things that you're doing if I hadn't feed you. It's like this, y'all. Jesus ain't going back on that cross. Don't you crucify him with flesh. He ain't going back on that. He's not going back on that cross every time you see him. Every year you no, it's already done. See, you just because you don't believe it, don't mean he didn't go on the cross. Just because you don't believe forgiveness is there for you, don't mean it's not there for you. Let me let me give us an illustration. I get Pat oppressed. Pat, I'm talking about man, I got financial situations. I get Pat a box. Maybe I put too many flowers on my head too. Pat look at the box and be like, <laughs> I don't even like the way this looking through the box in this box. Pat is now crying about the repossession of his car. Pat is now crying about um uh you know his mortgage being behind. Pat is sitting there crying about, you know, he can't take his wife out for dinner or buy nothing to eat. So Pat come to me and say, man, he crying said that. Did you open up the gift? No, man, but you know this and that. This and that. This and that. Say, Pat, did you open up the gift? No, man. You know what I'm, man? What are you talking about this gift? I don't care about Man, I'm sitting here losing my house and going through this. Pat, did you open up the gift? Wow. Mm. So one day, Pat sitting there in this situation, he looks at the gift, looking at him, and he opens the gift. And it's a million dollars in it. Mm. The answer to his problem didn't come when he had when he saw the million dollars. Mm -hmm. It was always there. Yeah, that's what I was saying right there. Right. It was always there. Amen. It was when he chose to open it up and see it. Right. And believe. Amen. Amen. What Jesus did on the cross is a done deal. 
He ain't doing it every time you think you need him to go on a cross for you. Forgiveness. That's why the Bible says this. Fear brings torment. God didn't give you the spirit of fear, but torment. But what the Bible takes, but torment comes from punishment. You thinking that the inner line is punished. Read your Bible. It tells you that it comes from punishment. So you think that punishment, and God says, the punishment cannot be waiting for you with you with me because forgiveness is there. Yeah. Forgiveness is there. I forgive you. Because the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. Look at somebody say, please grab somebody. I need y'all to grab somebody. Just grab somebody on the show. Just touch one on the show. Say, say the, blood the blood has already, has already say, really, really, it has already, it has already been, been Somebody about. You ain't forgiven and, and want to pick up your sins. Just tell them about the blood. Amen. When they want to tell you about your generational and what happens to your generation, just tell them about the blood. I don't need to plead the blood on every sin I got. I'm going to plead the blood on this. <laughs> You're going to be a person in bondage for the rest of your life. Once I accepted Christ, come on now. Listen, when I accept Jesus Christ, I accept no one, no one got a future. I accepted all who he is. In other words, if I accept Pat in my house, all who Pat is is coming in the house. Amen. Your problem is getting to the place where you believe what you received. Amen. Oh, ye yeah, a little faith. That's why the Bible says he withheld no good thing. And the plain Bible says, I have given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. I give it to you. Well, God, I'm struggling. Well, pursue. Now, listen. Now, I want to say this to make this clear. If you don't even have the Holy Spirit, meaning that if Satan is your father, Y'all with me, right? Then you need to repent. And all that God has to offer you is there. And there's deliverance. And if you are possessed by demons, there's power to cast demons out. Amen? When somebody is possessed, there's power to cast those demons out. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't got a demon problem, but you got a belief problem. You out of Egypt. You just don't believe you out of Egypt. Because your thoughts keep talking about, I keep thinking about what I used to do. You don't even pay attention to your thoughts when you motivate what you do no more. So what you think about it? You're not doing it. You ready to revenge the disobedience with obedience? What are you saying? When you have a thought, be ready to revenge it by not doing it. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, you went so fast. You said something about punishment. What did you say about that before you said that there's forgetting? You said, is that in the Bible? What did you say about punishment? Nope. Before you start talking, I can't hear you. Oh, okay. The Bible says fear brings torment. The Bible says love doesn't love doesn't love uh, perfect, love perfect love casts out fear because fear brings torment and torment brings causes one to look for punishment. 
We think that you you believe that punishment is waiting for you at the end, when actually Jesus came that forgiveness is waiting for you. See, it's like this. If I, I'm afraid of my mom because I know I went outside when she told me to stay in the house. So if she caught me, I'm in the room, I'm in the room afraid because of the punishment. Right? Now watch this. But if I know my mom loved me, it don't mean she's not going to chastise me, but I know that chastisement is not going to be to my end. You know what I'm saying? In other words, she ain't coming in that room to kill me. We pray. <laughs> she ain't coming in that room trying to listen to me. She ain't coming in that room with no stick. That's no. That's not how she's coming in that room. But that doesn't mean she's not coming in that room. But the Bible says he chases those whom we love. That doesn't mean she's not coming in that room to bring correction. Because correction is an act of love too. Because if there is if there is no correcting when you're wrong, then there's nothing stopping you from going down a road that can destroy you. There you go. So let's keep reading. Let's keep going. Okay. So I want to try to get this. We're almost finished. Stay with me. Okay. It says, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Here I say, truth. Truth. No matter what you do, who said this? God. God, God said it. That you can have all this, right? All the trees you eat from, but if you cannot eat from the tree of knowledge, good and evil, everybody understand? Right. And if you eat from it, this is the outcome. If you eat from it, you shall what? Shall die. 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 Bottom line, you can say God ain't fair. You can say whatever you want to say. He's giving you specific directions on what. That's why God, that's why when we were studying what a disciple is, God says, I want you to give them understanding. Why is the word understanding so powerful? Because understanding gives somebody some what's the first thing about understanding. I can't hear y'all. To do. To do. You can't do anything you don't understand. So understanding, when you understand something, there is a what? An opportunity for you to do. The second thing about understanding is what? To teach. To teach. You can't teach something you don't understand. So understanding is so extremely important. Why? It puts you in a position to do and to teach. And as a, as a disciple, your job is to what? Do and teach. All of y'all in this room, your job is to what? Do and teach. Faith without works is dead. So when you hear the word, the word should, the word should what? Motivate you to do the word. And when you do the word, your life is teaching. Teaching one how to obey God. Teach you one what the love of God look like. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Sitting. Being the light. Being the light to the world. Amen. If we got there, right? So God has given a word. And that word is the absolute truth. Amen? Yeah. Go to, let's go to chapter three. Start reading. Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. So he was cunning. He was what? Cunning? Cunning. Somebody look up the word cunning. Crafty. Somebody look up the word. I'm going to break it down anymore. more. Somebody look up the word crafty. Somebody look it up, please. Come on, come on. Break it down for us, son. Right? <laughs> the definition of crafty, one is to. Um, a depth in the use of subtly and cunning. And the other definition is marked by subtly and gear. Say it again, Luther. Marked by subtly and gear. Um, so, okay, this, this, this. We have come on. We thank you. I just want to keep breaking it down. Okay, because I want people to see the nature of which she chose to bring deception. Okay, it says having or showing skill in achieving one's end by deceit or invasion. Mm. I'll take by deceit and invasion. You have another one. Come on, come on. 
This is the word that the serpent, which the enemy used. This, watch this. This is this is the personality of the wolf who's trying to be a sheep. He's masquerading, he's cutting, but he knows he's getting close to the rest of the sheep not to hang out and be fellowship. His nature in that situation is to devour what he get next to. He be freeing you to devour you. They come, they, they hang out with you to devour. They do not come with a good motive and intent. They come in and their nature will begin to be exposed as something, when that nature is exposed, it's showing you who they really belong to. Go ahead. This definition says, clever at achieving one's aim mm. by indirect or deceitful methods. There's another one that says, in, involved in the making of... No, it's not that okay. <laughs> okay, we got, we understand, right? So the, the serpent that Satan is using, this is this is his nature. So, amen? Okay. Like that wolf, the wolf nature, Y'all know, it was funny, we was watching this, um, we, was, we was, when we was doing street ministry, remember that cat? I don't know, if, who was with me when we saw that cat? The cat was like, you ever know the cat? The cat was like, acting like he was, like he was, house, but he was acting like he was like a tiger. And he was, this cat was, oh, he was antagonizing this dog. He was, this cat was, I ain't never seen no cat antagonize a dog like that. That cat was like, and then when the dog chased him, he gonna hump up like, yeah. He was antagonizing that dog. What I'm saying, but he was like creeping, doing his slick. And if you look at the end, if you came, if you came late, you would say, "Why is that poor dog bothering that cat?" Oh, somebody give it him. You would have thought, "Why is that poor dog bothering that cat?" When the truth was, it was the cat antagonizing the dog. Right. That's why I don't ever make an assumption on something without hearing everybody. Yeah. Both sides. Why? Because sometimes the one who is talking will always paint a picture like they the one the victim. They will paint a picture like they the victim. They will paint a picture like they the one wrong. And, 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 and those who believe that it's because they don't sit down and say, well, let me hear both sides. Let me hear, let us come together and talk yeah. and see how I really laid out. Right. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Mm. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Somebody tell me, look how he's coming out of his mouth. Look, listen to what he said. This is the serpent being used by the enemy. Watch his words. Because what I want to show you something. Let me share something with you. Hold on. And the Lord God commanded man, saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But what does he say? Go read yours. I'm going to read mine first. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But what did he say? Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, what's interesting about that, God actually did say you can't eat from every tree of the garden. But he kind of like flipping it. Go ahead. Somebody had to hand up. You want me to say something? Okay, go ahead. And the woman said to the serpent, Watch the woman. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Now she should have stopped right there because now she's in agreement with, if I say true, she is now in agreement with because God did say that, right? When God, when if, if God tell you to forgive seven times seven, when you forgive somebody, you are in agreement with when God said it is better to give than receive. So when you give, you are in agreement with what? Are we getting these? Yeah. When God says, I shall provide all your needs according to my riches in my glory. When you say that in the midst of a, a storm, you are now in agreement with God's what? When God says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Oh, I got to thank you, Holy Spirit. When the Bible says that, when God tells us that I have given you power, over all the works of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you 
is that a truth or a lie? Sure. Then if it's the truth, why be talking about why be talking about booty? Come on. Why are people talking about if that's the truth and you are a believer, then why are you preaching more about the demon and them instead of the power that the ones in there called to walk on, walk in? Matter of fact, when you believe it, you get mad when the enemy try you. Uh, I've been there. When the enemy, that, that, or when he knocked, if he knocked on your door, or he, or he touched you in a dream, you wake up and hold up, God. You go to God. Why? Because you believe the word. So if you believe the word, if he touched you, like, why did you let him touch me? Because the word said, listen what happened. And then God started telling you, when you started to trip over here, this little door open. So I had to show you something. You need to give it that anger in your heart. Amen? I told you don't go to bed on your anger. So now you went to bed. And now you done had a nightmare. You tossed it up and down. A nightmare. And God, and you're like, well, I don't know. Can you pray for me? Yeah, I can pray for you. Stop going to bed and let the sun go down on your anger. No, it must be demon. No, no. no, you gave access. <laughs> By what? Not obeying the word of God. Now what? What's your deliverance? Stop being angry. God forgive me. What's my let me go? Will you forgive me? I'm in alignment. From in alignment, the gates of hell cannot prevail. Now watch this. When it does prevail, there's still a word that he can't overtake. There's lessons that God will allow you to receive. Oh, I, I hear always we say them, but he said some of them like no. Nah, go study Job. Every step of the way he had to get permission. Every step of the way he had to get permission. And then at the end, watch what he says. You can't touch his soul, though. So you might say, well, I feel like I'm struggling here. Your soul is still good. You can't touch his soul. Just sing the song. My soul is anchored. Mm -hmm. My soul is anchored. But God might let him touch you up a little bit. Of, just to build up your strength. Build up your strength. He might let him touch you up a little bit. Right. Yeah. 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 Or to reveal something to you. You know, a good parent does that too. They, they might let you feel a little bit of something what you're doing just so you can realize that ain't something you should be playing with. Don't mean you're not theirs. You're theirs. Amen? Where? Oh, yeah. Verse three. Mm -hmm. But of the fruit of the tree, mm -hmm. which is in the midst of the garden. Uh -huh. Now she's telling us, she's saying, this is the woman saying, she done gave him the truth. She said, God said, she said, but the truth, but isn't that what he said? The, the, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So she's repeating the truth. Go ahead. God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. When did God say that? <laughs> when did God say that, you, that if you touch it, you should die? It ain't in there. Lie. God never said, lie. Everybody said, access. Access. Remember now, he's a liar. He looks for access. He cannot find access and choose. Amen. Mm. Mm. Amen. Mm. He cannot find access and choose. He has to flee from truth. Come on. Mm. Now watch it. Now that he has, he has access, Watch what happens. Go ahead. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Now he is telling the woman, God is a liar. Because he got a place of access. So now he tells her that God is a liar. I'm going to show you why he had to do it that way. He said, God, God, she said, you will not die. But the truth is, is not when God spoke the truth, did he not say, if you eat from this tree, you will what? Die. 
So he's she, so now he's trying to convince her. Y'all better get this. Watch this. He's trying to convince the woman. He's trying to sell her a false outcome. Has Satan ever sold you a false outcome? Yeah. But see, the problem is the outcome came from you believing the lie. See, the Bible says that the ways of sin is yes. Satan is saying no, the ways of sin is happiness. You should be it. You should never be who you want to be with, right? People tell me this, but you know, if you love her, you should be able to be with her, right? Yeah, I mean, that's I, I, I. So he said, okay, then I'm gonna be with her. So he's selling you a false outcome because that that outcome does not come what God says it's going to come. Then God is a liar. God said that the wages of sin is yes. but Satan said, no, you won't die. So the wolf who's trying to be a sheep is like, ah, bah, I want grass. <laughs> like you want grass. Then they get in the group, bah, bah. Follow me. Come on, you coming up. Come on, follow me. Put your body back and I'm about to tear you up. <laughs> and one thing about one of Satan's greatest weapons is to suffering. And see, he is suffering because he found something in you that will lure you away from truth. And you're like, bad. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> then, it, 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 sometimes you're so hooked that you might start saying, <laughs> and you start noticing stuff, and you be like, <laughs> <laughs> come on, y'all. Y'all come on. You know what I'm saying? You start noticing. Wait a minute. Why you always on your phone? Why, why, why can't go through your phone? Why can't I go through your phone? You say you're committed to me. I'm committed to you. Why can't? Why your phone got a lock on? Why? Why are the codes on your phone? If we open, and I don't mean open relationships. Ooh. Then why can't I just I should when I come home I don't I put, if I see my wife my phone I'm like have fun why I have nothing to hide why because I operate in when you operate in you have nothing to hide you want to go through it you want me to go through it with you <laughs> you want to sit down on my laptop have fun. I'm going to bed. You want my oh, you want my Facebook history? Push the button. Why? Because when you operate in truth, there's nothing to hide. Only when you operate in lies, people are like, what you doing? That's my stuff. Oh, what the issue have? <laughs> Grandma, what did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what has happened? You're starting to see another nature. What is it? You're starting to see a person. Oh, oh, I believe I can preach it. You're starting to see a nature that's in contradiction of truth. Oh, but you might have. And if you my girl, why I catch you on the phone talking to another one I just about me? You we supposed to be we supposed to be my ace, but I'm looking at an email that you said, why why does this email have my name in it and you saying why didn't you come to me and tell me that? That's called stranger. That's bad by you. That doesn't line up with the truth and the nature of God. Men, women of God, leaders. Why didn't you step to that other man of God and say to that other man, what, 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 why? Did, the Bible says he was spiritual. 
Go with the spirit of meekness and restore. Read 2 Timothy 2, 24. Are we learning? Mm -hmm. why, why you? But you my girl. You my if you you saying I'm your lady, you saying God gave me to you, then then why you why you got why in your inbox? I can't see your inbox. Come on, guys. Here you go. Read. Second Timothy 2 24. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. So if you're a servant, we can't quarrel. Go ahead. But be gentle to but, all. But be gentle to all. Go ahead. Able to teach. Able to teach. Patient. Patient. Good. In humility. In humility. Good. If you're going to be a teacher, teach with patience and humility. Be, be lovely. Be, be, be walk in truth. Go ahead. Correcting those. And, it's also, and correct people. Correct them in love. Go in the spirit of truth, right? Amen. Well, don't, 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 don't move in the spirit of the, don't, don't, don't move like a wolf. Scattering the sheep for your own devouring. Because right. love don't operate like that. Right. Go ahead. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. Mm -hmm. If God perhaps will grant them repentance. Because you're hoping not that God get rid of them. You're not hoping that God destroy them. You're hoping God will bring them to a place of what? That means to turn away. And you're hoping for what? Keep going. So that they may know the truth. That they may know the truth. So if I see that you're erring the truth, what good is me snapping you over here? My job is to go to God and God, God can bring you to a place that you will know the truth. Because I know God, I know my father's truth is the God's father is that the word don't God says I desire nothing lost. Am I right, Kelly? Go ahead. And that they may come to their senses. And God says, I hope they come to their senses. And what? And escape the snare of the devil. I want them to escape the snare of the enemy. Not go take him by it. Amen. God wants us to be saved, not devoured. So all of us have to make sure we what? Examine ourselves and be operating according to truth. Amen. The same truth that saved you. Yes. Amen? Amen? That truth that was patient and long-suffering and gentle with you. Amen. Don't act like you forgot. Don't act like you got it all right on the first shot. Amen? Amen. Amen. Even when you were sold out, you found yourself in situations that you should have kept your mouth closed. So, <laughs> now, my nature is, what's, what's my real nature, y'all? Oh. Yeah, you didn't. <laughs> you didn't. Now, she's pregnant. Now, she calling me. <laughs> now she see what she stuck with. I know it's mine. You weren't saying it when we was going to dinner. You weren't saying it. Well, I want a DNA test. Oh. Excuse me. Oh. We acting, we acting like that outcome. I recognize that outcome. Mm -hmm. I produce that outcome. Amen. So you produced this idea. When I went to I produced that outcome. Jenna, movie, boom, boom, at the end. She was ready. Who from who? Boy, you sure is mine? You weren't saying that when you're saying baby, 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 baby. You weren't saying when you say, call my name, call my name. Now you're saying, don't know my name. Lose my number. I know a guy, I know a situation, what situation? He told her to lose his number. For real. He said, lose my number. But what? She thought the outcome, or he thought the outcome was going to be different by disobeying the truth. The outcome can't come out happy after if you didn't plant the seed that produces that. Come on, us, we got to learn. If you don't plant the seed that produces that outcome, then you're not going to get that as an outcome. Some of us, and myself included, we got some outcomes that we did not expect. 
Stop being mad at the person and go look at what you planted. Were you operating according to truth? Because what go ahead, go ahead. Um, when when you were talking, actually, um, the Holy Spirit brought back to my memory something that Apostle Chris had said um, in pertaining to Genesis 3, where it says, um, where, as you know, it says, Lord God, when the Lord is talking to Adam and Eve, he says, the Lord, the Lord God has commanded, but he brought to our attention how the serpent took away that attribute of him called Lord and just left it as God, taking out basically his mastership and his, his yeah. kingship and just leaving it just like that. So they he then got Eve to repeat it and just say, yeah, God just told us to do this. Like, it. No, it's Lord God, yeah. Lord Master, Lord Kings commanded us not to do this. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, I love it. That's why we have a discussion. Because you can't say you're the Lord. And when you, hear, when you see Jesus in the Bible, it says, Lord, that ain't optional. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now I want to show you this. We about to. I want to say, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Because I, because God want to show us something. Because why? Wow, say somebody listen I'm getting the. Um, say my deliverance is in the air. My deliverance is in the air. And I'm receiving it in my heart. And I'm receiving it in my heart. Verse five. Mm -hmm. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. And you will be like God. Everybody say, he sold a false outcome. He called God a liar and said that the outcome that God said death is not the outcome you're going to get. He's saying, let me tell you something, I've been there. He said, you ain't got to be married to get that. And your outcome, so he sold me the outcome that I don't have to be married, right? And then told me I can have a family and have all that in the situation. And now... I'm in child support and I'm paying child support. Mm -hmm. And now she can't stand me and I can't stand her. So my outcome was what? False. Oh, That's what lies lie do. They built a what? False oh, outcome. Because I don't know about you. At one point, I, it, it, it's the truth. It, it, also, God would tell us his why. Because he wants you to know why. Because you think life is over. God said, you just getting ready to get started. And I need you not to repeat what you know. I'm getting ready to bless. I'm getting ready to take you in the direction I'm taking you into. And you think it's over, but I'm getting ready to start. And I need you to be, I need you to be delivered. I need you to be delivered in your mind. I need you to be clear about the fact is that you no longer want. I don't know about y'all. Come on, y'all. Can we praise him for a minute? I don't want no more. I don't want no more. I don't want no it's like somebody telling you if you drink this, you're gonna be healthy, you're gonna be feeling you're gonna you will have strength, and you drink and you got diarrhea, you will see. You gonna and then you and you spent $150, you're gonna be angry, you're gonna be depressed. Why? Because they sold you something that, that they told you was gonna produce this, but it produced a false outcome. Understand? He's telling Eve, your outcome is that you're going to be what? God lied to you, Eve. His word is not truth. And the outcome, uh, and this is the outcome you really going to get. This is what you really going to get, Eve. You're going to get this. When you disobey God, you're going to have a great outcome. That is what he's saying. When you disobey God, when you don't really believe the word of God, you're going to have a great outcome. But I'm a living witness. I'm a testimony that that is absolutely untrue. Why? Because I've seen when I obey God and the outcome was, even when it was a bad situation, it was still a good outcome. Amen. And when I didn't obey God, it wasn't a good outcome. It wasn't good at all. You know what the only thing that was good about it is that God stepped in and rescued me. Amen. He did not let me get the fullness of that outcome. Anybody God stop you from getting the fullness of the outcome? Amen. Cause I know, I'm just being honest, I'm just gonna be transparent with you. Man, I know when I was in the world, I remember 
We used to go, go me and when I was at the sheriff's department, my homeboys, we used to go to the Rolex. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I was like, oh my God, they want to get that. Listen, listen. And we went to, and there was a young lady we met that said, we had Rolex. My homeboy, this is a true story. My homeboy, he hit that and they on, so did I. We, we, it's like home. My homeboy, they on, died of full blown AIDS. Oh, Left his wife, he, I didn't catch, I didn't have anything. That wasn't because I wasn't a sinner. That wasn't because that was not a deserved outcome. It was mercy. It was just mercy. Some of us sitting in this room, you didn't get what you deserved. You got mercy. So, so stop passing stones at other people like you were good. Stop looking at other people like, oh, she had a baby. You had sex. You know how they get. Oh, she had two babies. And they be like, and then you had two, two babies from being every day. Well, you sex with about four or five people because you didn't have no baby. Don't make come on, stop playing games. God said, I'm gonna get you this way. You look on a person you lust. He said, You can't claim no righteous in any way. So stop acting like they was to you. Amen. Amen. He's telling the woman, he says to the guy, he's saying God is not. He said, There is no truth. And the outcome when you obey this, what I'm telling you. When you disobey God, the outcome is going to be good. When you disobey God, the outcome is going to be good. That's deception. You see people doing some real creepy things, but the outcome, if you don't intercede, the outcome is not going to be good. Because one thing God, seven things that God hate, one of the seven things that God hate is what? Mm -hmm. Shedding in some blood. Another thing God hate. To create this cold yeah. to creep into somebody's house or to move into, and create this cold God says he hates that. But thank God that God told us to pray for those who decide to use us. But why? Because I gotta pray, and you gotta pray if somebody tried to do that, that God got be mercy. Amen. Maybe they were ignorant and it don't cost them to ask the open the seats, they can be able to repent and move from that, from the from the consequences that's coming from their actions. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Go ahead. Um, okay. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. I want to say this to you. When a lie begins to change your vision. Uh -huh. When a lie begins to change your vision. To what you're eating. The lie that she has now conceived has changed how she sees. See, that's why you learn. Why that person act like they can't see what they're doing is wrong? Because the lie that they have conceived has changed their vision. Why she can't see that? No, why why can't he why can't they see that 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 that, that that's a man that's a, they, that vision has changed according to the lie? That's number one. Your vision begins to change. You now see through the eyes of the lie. You don't see through the eyes of truth. You see through the eyes of the lie. Why? Because you want the false outcome. You so bad want the out outcome, the false outcome, that now you see through the eyes of the lie. Because, <clears throat> go ahead, read it. That it was pleasant to the eyes. Now, something a lie becomes pleasant to you. See what you see. You know, I'm, 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 I'm going to use a very, um, there are women and men, there are women in today's society that don't mind being a sideline. Yeah. Why? It has become pleasurable for her because she believes a lot that she's not worth being married to or being committed to. Or somebody loving, so she has accepted the lie that now calls her to be some to be used as just something to be have sex with, and she get what she wants, and they buy her something. Her vision is messed up by the, the enemy who has told her, because the Bible says, when a man finds a wife, he finds good things and obtains favor with God. She doesn't see herself. I, you know what I mean? Switch doors out of like, no, you wife material. You a wife, but she can't see herself with that because she believed the lie. And she sees herself through the lie. What is a lie? You just something to be used. You just something to be played with. 
she sees us up there. When you start seeing like this, you start not wanting, you don't want to talk about it, you want to pray for her or pray for him. Because the lie has captured her. She's been overtaken, and now she, so she doesn't see herself according to the truth. God sees her as something, watch this. The Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. God sees her as a good thing, and she doesn't see herself as a good thing. The lie has deceived her. And she'll go around playing like she married because the lie, well, at least he here. At least he come home. And God says, no, you're worth, no, you're worth more than me. You're more precious than me. Matter of fact, I said in my word that a man is to leave his mother and, wife, mother and father and to cleave to his wife and they are to become his one flesh. Matter of fact, I said in my word that a man, that I told a man that uh, to love his wife as Christ loved the church and he gave his life for her. She doesn't see herself as somebody worth giving her, somebody that worth. See, you have to see yourself as somebody worth. What does, let me show you how that may look. Boy, I'm worth giving your last name. Before you get anything here, I'm worth your last name. You want to be with me, give up your last name. Give up your last name. But she doesn't see herself that way because, the, so watch this. And somebody said it earlier, because the TV tells a lie. The movies tell a lie. The music tell a lie. To the point is, today, if you stand on that truth, you get ridiculed by the lie. That's the, that's what that's darkness enlarging itself. That's ignorance enlarging itself. I mean, the lie has become so huge that the truth seems like it's trying to be smothered out. But you can't put the light of God out. Amen? Amen. Ladies, you are, ladies, you are Proverbs 31. Amen? Amen. Ladies, you are a good thing. And when a man finds you, when a man connects to you, he obtains favor with God. Amen. When a man connects, he should be happy to be connected. Why? Because the word says he obtains favor with God. Amen. See, when you obtain favor with God, that means you have you have possessed something that is good. Amen. Amen. And a tree desirable to make. Now, okay, we got it became pleasant. Look at that word. It became a lie becomes desirable. I know it's not good for me. I know crack is not good for me, but it's desirable. <laughs> you know, this is, I know cocaine is not good for me, but it's desirable. Y'all feel what I'm saying? It's desirable. I want it. I know lying is not good for me, but it's desirable. Are we learning? And I'm like, God, I don't want this to be desirable for me. Amen? Amen. I don't want it to be pleasant. See, y'all see deliverance in it. I don't want it to be pleasant to me anymore. If it ain't pleasant to you, God, I don't want to be pleasant to you. I want to see me the way your word says I am. I want to walk according to how you see me. So my outcome will be blessed. Amen. 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 And what I love about God, even though I didn't see myself way right, and my outcomes was messed up, anybody your outcomes were messed up, you had so many outcomes that were messed up, and God said, I still want you. Amen. I still love you. And he's like, girl, your outcome won't define you. God, he's like, what? No, God, you know what I did? You know what I was doing? Yeah, and I still want you. Amen. And you still mine. Thank you. And you're like, what kind? And if you if you really get a connection, you're like, what kind of love is this? This is some crazy exactly. love. It's some crazy. And you know, if you did that to a human being, they'd be like, step. Dude, don't call me no more. And we did things that we did to God, they'd be like, I hate you. And God, like, I want you. Exactly. And you're like, you want me? No, seriously, you want me? Yeah, I want you. Why? Because I'm the God of turn around. Yeah. Go ahead. You're almost finished. A tree desirable to make one wise. Look at a tree. The tree that he said death is there, right? She said it's desirable to produce an outcome that God didn't say it's going to produce. She said, my outcome when I eat this, I'm going to be wise. 
That ain't what God told her. But because she believed a lot. And all of a sudden, I'm going to tell you, I feel this in my spirit. God is dropping some things in your spirit while this message is going on. Amen. And you have to begin to examine yourself and say, God, I see that area. Or I see that situation where I think it's going to produce an outcome to my ego. But I'm not in alignment with your word. I've been deceived to believe this is going to produce a good. Y'all read it again. Just listen to what she said, because what she is saying is in contradiction of truth. What Jesus said. Go ahead. A tree desirable to make one wise. She said a tree that desirable to make one wise. And God said, the truth said, this tree, do not eat from it or you're going to die. But she said it's going to make her wise. Wisely did. Uh. <laughs> and I would tell you how long suffering God is, how patient he is. Anybody had wrong outcomes and you kept going? Yes. Yep. Yep. And then he gets you out and then you go again. Oh, yeah. oh we won't act like that. Come on, we won't. And then he gets you out and you go again. And then he gets you out and you go again. Come on, time. Yeah. And then you like, you finally get, you like, I'm tired. <laughs> Anybody, come on now. Anybody been there? I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Hey, come on. When I was going to make my chick right here, and I got paid, and I was bringing home about $100 something, they finished. I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> but they're like, Child support here. Child support here. Here's your check. I worked two weeks. 150. Oh, this is not good. You tired yet? I'm about to tell you something. I what? Can I be trying to tell you something? You know maybe you tired? Anybody read my book? Let me tell you what made you tired. I wasn't tired yet. I said, no, I'm still going to do a real lot thing yet. I'm a little tired, but not tired. Then one day, August, 95. I ain't tired. I see an ex at this professional thing, right? I got a woman at home, and you know, I'm like, got an ex. And then she prayed me, she home, and I see this woman I used to talk to. Her, so I'm coming over there late on night. That night, my baby mama, she used to spend night mama, but she wasn't there. You know, you, you have no little sweet thing. She, you know, I said, no, because you ain't never, Lust ain't never satisfied. So I go over to this young lady I used to date house. Whatever, do what I'm gonna do. And she gave me a hug. And I told her to take out the dinner tomorrow to this day because it was my first day. I'm gonna spend time with it, which I knew I would because I had a lady lie. Wow. Thinking it's gonna produce a good outcome. What was a good outcome? She made me feel good that night. So the outcome said, say, go do this. You're gonna feel good. I felt good. I thought I can get away with it. You know, when you feel good, you get good with it. Just like, so, just like when you embrace that wolf, that's really a sheep. I mean, when you embrace that sheep, that's really a wolf. You're gonna feel good until that teeth get bitten to you. You might have teeth bitten to you, you thought it was. You know, see anybody been cut? That's why in the dream, if you ever see yourself cut in the dream, that means something wrong with you. If you ever see something, if you ever been dreaming and that thing bit into you and saw blood, that means you're gonna be wounded. But that means it's gonna penetrate. That means that person, if you ever been in the dream and it cut you and you saw the blood, that's not good. That means that thing is going to affect your life to the place where it's gonna be deep. If you don't keep it a cut. If you ever been in a dream and the dog actually bit you, or something like that, that means that thing is something keeping you. That means you're going to be deeply, you're gonna be deeply moved by that. You're gonna be deeply hit by that. I don't understand that. Those are some things in the dream. So, guess what? So I ain't call her the next day. That's what a lie do. You tell a lie. She got she has expectations of going out the next day, but I don't show up. Because why? I'm doing me. You know what I'm saying? So I sold her what? A false outcome. Let's spend some time together, be together. So I went my lady home, had a good birthday, everything was all great. I'm happy, but I had a good outcome over time. Three days later, I get a phone call. Hey, Debbie Alpha, how you doing? What's up? We have dispatches from, hey, how you doing? What's up, girl? I'm one of the first five dispatching you to my phone. What the fuck I'm at um, I just want to talk to you about, you know, and she starts to my, you know, we did this, and you am like, yeah. And then she started saying, I said, you know what? This sounds like you're trying to say I raped you or something. She was like, no, I'm not saying that. I said, I hope not, because hey, you're not coming home. So if you, you walk me down, so you gave me a hug. Man, I didn't know at that time. That she had holiday of police on the line. Set up. Why? Because see, I thought I was gonna get the outcome I wanted. But see, God says, no, you're gonna get the outcome from your sin. 
You thought you can go over there and have sex and just leave to go do what you want to do. You thought you could sin, but I said the wages of sin is death. I'm going to be merciful, but I'm going to let you feel these consequences. Next thing you know, I went, I, I've been like, I'm, in, oh, I'm innocent. I'm going to take a lot of take, take, they, We don't get none of this. If my sister don't do that, I said, no, I'm going to go. Oh, that thing didn't come back probably. I'm like, what? Next thing you know, I'm in booking the place where I book people. I'm totally humiliated. I'm on the news. Remember now, I'm in, I'm Robert Shears probably. See, some of y'all, that's like, oh, y'all too young. That's y'all too young. I'm on the news. I'm talking about this in the paper, all of a sudden, accused of rape, the all the situation, boom, boom, boom. I don't see what the outcome, the outcome that Satan had for me, the outcome I thought was gonna get. I used that and hit that and I had some fun. Go on my wife, go, go on my son, and I'm gonna raise and do what I want to do. I said, but the outcome to sin, the way to sin is what? Well. Yeah. yeah. See, some of us, you get little bit outcomes of negative at first, but you keep playing, it's gonna be a big outcome. Mm -hmm. So then, then I'm thinking, but I had a false outcome because now. I'm getting the outcome of what I planned. Yes. But then, mercy says no. <laughs> I'm never going to let you go. So I'm on the flow. I got my gun built because what? See, Satan outcome. Satan outcome is not just to get you to be over to, to get overtaken. He wants you to kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah. He wants you to why? Because. As long as you are breathing, you can be transformed. As long as you are breathing, your life can be changed. As long as you are breathing, you can overcome that situation. I'm not saying you won't forget to hurt, and I'm not saying certain things, but you can overcome in your life. And what I found out at 40 years so funny that your life could be just the plans that God has for you are just about to be implemented. Mm -hmm. That means the greatness that you were designed for it now, because you had to come into you first. You had to stop. God had to get you from doing things your way and surrender to His way. If God brought you tonight, he wants you to give us your transformation in the air. Your deliverance is in the air. Your new outcome is in the air. But I did this. But I went through this process. I don't care. I got another outcome from you. I got another outcome from you. He said, I have a great outcome for you. I have a great outcome for you. Amen. If you just receive the word. So, next thing I know, by him. But watch this. I never saw jail. That was crazy. Even though, so I, I mean, I'm sitting, I, I'm in booking. Never went on the floor. God made that. said, but you ain't going, I'm not. He was like, you know, it's not. I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if I put you in, you might lose your mind. <laughs> I got you here. Wow. Never saw Jim. Wow. Never. Y'all ain't what I just said. You realize what I'm going to rest of them? I should have went up the chair. I should have. Yeah. Because yeah. I never saw Jim. Wow. Yeah. Especially being in her house. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you, explain this to you. If you are at somebody's house and you are accused of rape, they normally gonna charge you with kidnapping too. Mm -hmm. You say, wait a minute, they try. No, yeah. let me tell you why. Because when you're at their house mm -hmm. and you rape them, that means you are restraining them. Oh, Even at their house, meaning that if I do, see, I know you say, well, in somebody else's house, well, you can say things that it can happen in somebody else's house too. But the thing about it, when you're with they, but they see, well, let me, let me change my, let me change it. I said that one. Actually, let me reverse that. Actually, if, if she was at my house, I would have got charged with kidnapping. But because I was at her house, it's hard to prove kidnapping because it's something that was not premeditated. You know what I'm saying? So, and when you, and that's why rape, it's, like, it's, it's actually a non bond you can't bond down on it. Because when they throw kidnapping in, you can't bond. So because it happened at her house, they couldn't charge me with kidnapping. So therefore it was a bondable offense. Therefore, I got out. And just because and God delivered me out of all of it. But I stand before you today as one who got delivered and began to begin to receive the word and die. And God said, I got another outcome from you. Amen. 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 And now, 26 years being married, daughters, it was a different outcome. Amen. Amen. I'm the same one that had two baby mamas. I'm the same one that, but now I'm the one that got a wife and took it. a different outcome. And that outcome that comes, I, I, I was 33 years old when that happened. As a matter of fact, everything started to open up until somebody think your life, you too old. No, I didn't start living until I was 40. Mm. God didn't start, it was like, God, God showed me a movie that 40 just said, something about 40 with God, I don't know what it is. Yeah. God, like, <laughs> I didn't say, God said, now nah, nah, you make me just like, I'm really. 
I'm saying, because this all oh, kind of doors open when I turn forward. It was like, it's, it's like God was like, okay, and He showed me what's going to do that. So, listen, the outcome, we know, we look at more. You know what I'm saying? She took of the fruit and ate. Watch this. Mm -hmm. She also gave to her husband with her. See, when you when you buy into a lie, you take others with you. Oh my, that's real. When you buy into a lie, people that lie, they, they, I promise you, when they come in, they want to snatch other people into that. And others who don't know what truth is will be carried away by that lie. They are, they, I don't see people where they know God has done things for them. They know God saved. They know they moved, the Holy Spirit moved and delivered them. And they got a lie convinced that they weren't even saved. Wow, that's true. They let a, they had, they had a lie believe. They, how are you going to do the things you do? How are you going to do anything you do without the Holy Spirit? That's right. But you let a lie come in and say, no, you've got the Spirit. How is that possible? The thing you can't, it's not by your mind of power, but by his Spirit. You can't be the living without the Spirit. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? So how can you ignore all the liberty he has given to you and act like, how can you let somebody say, Oh, I see it going on. I see it going on. You ain't, you ain't say God ain't with you. What? I don't see God deliver me. I don't see God bring me out. I didn't, I couldn't have brought myself. I didn't stop myself from doing this. God, that's the Holy Spirit that stopped me from doing it. Now watch it. It's because I, I might be an empty stage don't mean I ain't God. Can I get amen? amen. Just because you might be an infant stage don't mean you don't have it. As a babe desiring a sincere look, what about the day they what? Grow their body. You growing. But don't you let nobody ever come. Because see, if I start convincing you that you ain't saved, if I start convincing you that you don't have no power, why? Because the enemy pursuing you? When it's really about you walking in faith, now God is building up your faith to what? Mm -hmm. No, we ain't doing that. You ain't going to know. I know what God. Come on, listen to me. I said, the Bible says, um, watch what you say. You say you're overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and the words of your testimony. The Bible says that you are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. Anybody ever thought of why he said the blood? He said, what is he saying? You're overcomers by the blood. Why? Because forgiveness was there for you. And your testimony, how can you forget it was the blood that brought you to the place of forgiveness? It was you receiving the blood that brought you to the place of forgiveness. You can't convince me I'm not forgiven. Why? I believe the blood of the Lamb. In my testimony, me and my life being changed, me, I don't care if, I, if I'm smoking half a pack of cigarettes, my, I see me losing that urge, amen? I see God, don't get, I'm going from glory to glory to glory, amen? And God is washing me and cleansing me. Come on, somebody. And God is renewing my mind. That's what I'm growing up. I'm going. I'm going to be strong. like a baby. He says, as a baby, I start like a baby might fall out sometimes. And sometimes I need to be encouraged. Amen. And sometimes I need to be let somebody know you can do it. Come on, baby. You can walk this walk. Come on. God, if God be for you, who can be a to you? Don't be taking advantage of somebody's baby state. The Bible says it would be better for you to put a milestone around your neck and cast yourself into the sea than you to begin to try to deceive one of these babies and make them think that God ain't moving in their behalf. No. Mm -hmm. I know God moved me. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I'm growing. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the faith, and, 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 there's, and, and there's enemies for sooner, huh? but they being destroyed as the more I step out in faith. Right. Amen? And sometimes, you ever been shaking? Yeah. Been shaking because why it looked crazy. It looked like you ain't never been there. I'm just recently, I'm like, I ain't never been here before. I ain't never been in this situation before. I'm like, man, this seems crazy. And God says, you ain't, but the same faith that took you to the thing you was in is the same faith gonna take you through this. Amen. So, Father God, I, I just want to say, Father God, we thank you tonight. Amen. Amen. I thank God. And if there's anybody in this room tonight, any man or woman in this room tonight, you know, man, I'm gonna tell you something. 
I rebuke in the name of Jesus every lie. Every lie. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit, we, this is the first, this is the first we got to know them. The Holy Spirit said, the Bible says, I should give you a, the spirit of truth. And he shall guide you in all truth. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going, not, not, not just the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to God. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal truth to everybody in this room. And if there's any place in you that a lie is trying to have, or trying to take this place, amen? Any place in you that that lie is trying to tell you what God has not said about you and what God won't do for you. Any place where that lie is trying to put doubt, fear, and unbelief, we come against it tonight in the name of Jesus. For we are his sheep. And he said, my sheep hear my voice, and another they shall not follow. But then when I found out when Jesus said, when you follow me, he said, deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. So when I'm following the word, I'm putting off my flesh where lies with, where it's supposed to say, I can't do this. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. The Bible says, if God be for me, who can be against me? Mm -mm. And the same Bible says to you, he said, he said, I chasten those in whom I love. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord. So, God, I thank you. And as God was giving these messages, I saw people start to get, get delivered. I saw God start setting people free. Why? Because God began to reveal lies that we are starting to ponder on. Lies of lust and lies that begin to don't line up with what God says about you. God, we did not. We will not be that generation that get carried away. We will be that generation that will be steadfast and unmovable, always abiding in the word of the Lord. Amen. We will not be carried away. We will not be carried away by our own desires. We will not be carried away by our own desires. Eve sit there and listen. Oh my God, she listened to where her vision was changed. Amen? And she started seeing something desirable and started thinking about an outcome of something that was not what God said it was an outcome going to be. See, I know what the outcome is if I go let my flesh have its way in this situation. I don't care. If the devil talks to me, it's going to be fun. You're going to have a good time. Gonna, no, it's not. I'm going to tell you, uh-uh, uh, it's going to, that outcome going to be sin and that sin going to bring death and that death, and if I don't begin to get it right, I'm going to be exposed. So whatever God has been dealing with you about, whatever God has been talking to you about, whatever that keep coming back up and keep coming back up, and God is trying to get you to believe what he has said. Let me tell you what God is doing with you. He is trying to get you to believe what he has said is true. Because you can't fight the good fight of faith without belief. God didn't come to Abraham and say anything new, am I right or wrong, when he was suffering. He kept saying the same thing. God, some of us in this room, God been telling you, you are mine. You are my daughter. You are my son. And you let the storms in front of you, you let oceans in front of you say, I don't know if I'm even saved. I don't know if God even loved me. I don't know if God is even with me. I'm going through this. I feel depressed. I feel like this. Cast down. Whenever the Bible says anything that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God, the Bible says anything that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God, capture and bring it down. You got the word in you. Capture that lie and bring it down. And be ready to revenge the disobedience with the obedience. I am everything that God says I am. The seed in, watch this, in y'all own Holy Spirit, I saw it. In an apple seed, everything in that seed is what the tree needs. Everything in the seed of Christ is what you need. We're made to a new creature. That gave you strength to overcome. That made you more than a conqueror. I'm telling you, the doctrine of devils will convince you that God has not set you free. Will convince you that God has not did what he said he has done to get you to depend on me. But God's word cannot return void. 
The Bible says, whom the Spirit of the Lord set free is free. What? Y'all ain't saying like y'all believe that. The Bible says, whom the Spirit of the Lord has set free is what? Was Israel free? Yes. Even when Egypt was pursuing them, were they free? Yes. Just because the enemy pursuing you don't mean he got rights over you. Amen. When the blood canceled it, somebody said the blood. the blood. When the blood canceled it, don't you dare let nobody, don't you dare let nobody convince you that the blood ain't got no power. As I come to see Amen. 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 You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. And God's love for you, His love for you, nobody can end it. It's just beginning. It's just beginning. And I know, don't even think something. You know what? You know what's funny? Because the pain be real. How many of y'all know the pain be real? Oh, it be real. It be real. Amen. And let me tell you something. That ocean look real too. You know, see, sometimes we be looking at them like they, 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 they weren't like us. They were just like some supernatural people. If you take me to an ocean and I ain't never seen no ocean still, I'm like, we're going to die. I, I don't see no boat. I don't see no way to get over this ocean. God, I don't know you. Oh, my God. I don't know you like this yet. I don't know you as the God that just spit the impossible. But God says, you got to know me this way for the assignment that I called you over your life. See, when somebody calls you a prophet, give you an office of a prophet or a prophet, that, that title don't mean nothing until God makes you. Amen. See, you got the world. They think, no, you're, you're not, no, no. God makes his prophets. He makes his prophets. And when he makes you, oh my God, oh, you better go study. God, no, see, like God said, you're an apostle. I found this out. I don't, I'm glad he declared the name. You ain't no apostle. He says, now nah, I'm going to make you. I'm going to make you mine. Because my sheep know my voice. I'm going to make you mine. Why? That's my gift. That's my office. And you will not use it unless I tell you to use it. You will not move. How do I know what I'm saying is true? Jesus moved in all the five ministry. And guess what? When he came out, when he went, when he was going into the wilderness, when he was ushered into the wilderness, and what he said, if I be the son of God, turn this stone into bread. Jesus said, hold up. I'm hungry. And I got the ability. I'm hungry and I got the ability. But man shall not live by every word that bring on. But every word, if God can tell me to open my mouth, I ain't seeing nothing. Because you're trying to prophesy over somebody that God can told, I done locked him down. I, done, I got him locked down right now. People run up there, no, uh-uh, no, don't open your mouth, uh-uh. Why? You don't know what they've been doing for the last week. Why they can't? Why they can't hear me right now? You trying to go to the hospital and raise somebody up? The God says, "I'm taking home." The Bible says that those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. That means sons and daughters. That means God tell you to operate. When they came out that upper room, the reason why God had them speak in tongues because they were the about men from every nation, they needed to speak in tongues. Why? Because they were, and in that, and that was the reunification of the separation in Genesis eleven. In Genesis eleven, it was God who gave all those different languages and caused them to separate. And it was the same God that united them under Jesus. He united by causing them all to hear in, in their language, even to the point of the Gentile. He said, "Peter, I'm gonna do it here too." Why? Because I want them to know that I'm a God of the Gentile too. So the same outcome came over the Gentile over here. And that's sometimes when you read the Bible, you don't see them. They receive in the spirit, but you don't see them talking about speaking in tongues. Read your Bible. You don't see it. We understand. He said, my sheep. They know me. They know the truth. A church that don't know truth is a confused church. Always learning. Never coming. Always learning. Never coming to the truth. Always learning. 
a form and a fashion of godliness, really wanting to show off himself and not show God the glory. Because y'all heard me say this over and over again. The power is not in the office you walk in. The power is in Jesus was anointed as a son. The power is in the sonship and daughtership you walk in. <laughs> and the office is how you exercise that power. Because you can't take away my Because he said, upon this rock shall I build my church. What rock? On the rock of sonship. And he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail. That's why when he first challenged Satan, when he first challenged Jesus, he said, if I be the son of God, he challenged his identity. Why? Because he stole Adam identity. He stole Adam. Because from that day on, Adam was known as a sinner. Jesus is known as the righteous. Adam is known as one what through Adam, sin came through the whole world. Jesus is known as through him, righteousness came through the whole world. Their identity from sonship, their works are different. And they're known by it. Amen. So, Father, we thank you tonight. Mercy is in this house. Not condemnation. Mercy is in this house. And Lord, we cast down every lie, even the small lies, little lies, because a little happened. Everything that is speaking contrary to what you have said about your sons and daughters, we cancel that lie tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. And we loosen. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that is to God. That's what the word says. It's to God us in all truth. For you did not leave us as orphans, but you brought us in as children. And you told us that we are yours and you are ours. So God, I thank you over this week, oh my God, that deliverance shall spring forth like fresh water and minds shall be renewed and hearts shall be settled as you expose the lie and crush it with the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.